So I want to talk quickly about some complex numbers and what we can do with them. To start with, you should know that complex numbers um, have an imaginary part and a real part. The imaginary part lets us deal with this bad boy, the square root of negative 1. We are going to define that to be the letter i. And I make my i just a little curly so that I can tell it from my 1's. So here is a, an example of a complex number. 2 plus 7i. Okay. In its generic form, you will see a plus bi, almost always those exact letters. So we have a real part, no i's, no imaginary part, plus an imaginary part, the bi. Okay. So here are two examples. So one of the first things you'll practice doing with complex numbers is adding them. So if I want to add these particular complex numbers, it should feel very intuitive. In fact, your brain should start doing it already because like those eyes kind of look like variables, so we kind of want to combine like terms. And we do. So this simplifies to be, so we combine the 2 and the negative 5 to get negative 3, and the 7i and the 10i to get plus 17i. So we can add them, subtract them, and multiply them just as you would think. So very quickly, let's go ahead and run through that. Right, I'll point out the time when you have to be careful. So we've added. Okay, that looks like a minus because my first thing was negative. Right. So now I'm going to subtract. I'm going to do some parentheses and take two steps so that I'm careful. Why do I have to be careful? Right, because I'm subtracting off both pieces so it has to distribute. So 2 plus 7i minus a negative plus 5 minus a 10i minus 10i. Awesome. Okay, and now we're ready to combine like terms. 2 plus 5 is 7. And 7, plus 7i minus 10i is minus 3i. Okay, oh, before we multiply, i got to hop up to the top again. Back up here. Negative 1 is the same thing as i. I'm sorry, square root of negative 1 is i. What happens if we square both sides of this? Right, so if I have the square root of negative 1 and I square it, doing the same thing to both sides, this is going to tell me that i squared is equal to negative 1. I'm going to need that now. Okay, let's go back and grab our two, or two complex numbers, and we're going to multiply them. 2 plus 7i times negative 5 plus 10i. Does it feel like a foiling situation to you? Yep, it is. Okay, or a double distribute, however you think of it. So 2 times negative 5, 2 times 10i. So that's just a 20i. The 2 and the 10 multiply, the i tags along, inner. 7i times negative 5 is negative 35i. And then my last term is a 70 positive i squared. Okay, so now we're not quite done. We have to tidy this up just a bit. So we know that i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So I'm going to replace this i squared with a negative 1, and that multiplies that 70. Well, let's see what else I've got. I've got my negative 10, nothing to do with that yet. These two, I have 20i minus 35i. Yep, so minus 15i. Okay, and then that guy there is going to be minus 70, a positive 70 times a negative 1. Okay, we're almost there. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Negative 80 minus, right, the negative 10 and the negative 70, minus 15i. It will always be able to be reduced to one real part and one imaginary part. Okay, so don't stop simplifying to you. It looks something like that. Okay, so we did adding, we did subtracting, we did multiplying. I'm waiting for dividing, because dividing actually gets, um, kind of split apart into two different categories, okay? So the first one I'll go ahead and put here. So dividing case one. This is when your denominator has only one term. 
okay? Our goal is an equivalent expression without any i's in the denominator. Okay, pretend I wasn't too lazy to write denominator. So that whole i squared equaling negative 1, that's going to be key. So here's an example. If I have, let's say, um, 6 plus 8i divided by 3i. Okay, all I have is an expression, so I can't, um, well, I, I can't go ahead and just square everybody. That's not allowed. But I can multiply by 1. Now we're going to be clever when we write 1 and write it like this. i over i. It looks weird, but it's the same thing top and bottom in a fraction. That equals 1. So let's see what happens then. On the top, i times 6 plus 8i. On the bottom, 3i times i. Distribute on the top, 6i plus 8i squared. i times i on the bottom is 3i squared. Okay. Now, what does i squared equal? Exactly. So make that change. So I'm going to have 6i minus 8 over, yep, negative 3. Good job. And then you can split that apart. So I'll have 6i over negative 3, negative 2i, and negative 8 over negative 3, plus 8 thirds. Okay. There we go. So when there's one term in the bottom, to make the i go away, we just multiply top and bottom by i and simplify. Now case 2 when you're dividing, that's when I have two terms in the denominator. I have both an a and a bi part. And what we're going to do is going to feel very much like it did if you remember rationalizing denominators. In fact, that first one should feel a lot like rationalizing the denominator too. So case two, denominator has two terms. So here's our example. Uh, okay, let's make it kind of nice. How about 4 for the numerator and um, 2 plus 5i for my denominator? So you might think, well, why don't you just multiply top and bottom by i again? Well, I could, and that would make this one be an i squared, so that would go away. But remember, it distributes, so then I'm going to have a 2i. So I'm just changing the term the i lives with. It's not illegal, but it just doesn't really get me where I need to be. So that's why we have this new beast. And if you remember from your factoring lives, a plus b times a minus b, it's called a complex conjugate. Complex conjugate. Okay. The terms stay the same, but I'm going to change that sign in the middle. Okay. Notice. There's the number 1, right? Doesn't look like 1, but it is. Same thing, top and bottom. Okay, and we're going to multiply. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So my numerator, I'm going to have 4 times 2 minus 5i. I'll distribute it in a minute. And on the denominator, 2 plus 5i times 2 minus 5i. Okay. Look what happens on the denominator when we FOIL that out. And as long as they're conjugates, it should always happen. And if you don't remember, go back and review your uh, difference of squares factoring section. So 2 times 2 is 4. I'll just write it in blue underneath. Uh, 2 times negative 5i is negative 10i. Positive 5i times 2 is a plus 10i. And then my last term, 5i times negative 5i is going to be minus 25i squared. 
See what happens on that outer inner term? They're going to add out because I have a negative one and a positive one. Perfect. That's just what I wanted. Okay. Moving this down. So I'm just going to do some tidying now. The 4 I'll distribute in my numerator. So I'll have 8 minus 20i. And in the denominator, I have a 4 minus 25i squared. But we're trying to get all the i's out of the denominator, and now I have an i squared. That's right, because it's negative 1. So I can just replace it with the number negative 1. It's multiplying that negative 25, so it'll be a plus 25. Just stay with that whole thing. So this i squared and that negative sign are coming together as a plus 20i, sorry, 8 minus 20i over 29. And you may or may not be able to get away with that. If you're in my class, that's fine. If you're in somebody else's class who says, nope, I want it to look like a plus bi, take a look, right? I just write two fractions. One, write the 8 over the 29 minus 20 over 29 times i. Now I get this question a lot, where can the i live? It can either be off to the side if you want, or it can be up in the top with the 20, but don't put it down with the 29, right? We just did all that work to move it out of the denominator. We don't want it trying to sneak back down. All right.